Hey there, welcome to Simple Home Therapy. My name is Miranda, and today I want to show you how I clean my oven and refrigerator with homemade non-toxic cleaners. And if you like this video, a thumbs up is the best compliment, and please consider subscribing. First, I'm removing the racks out of the oven. Then I'm going to make a paste just using water and baking soda. I put down a trash bag underneath the door of the oven just to catch any drips. The trick to cleaning with baking soda in your oven to get off all those really stuck on food spots is to apply the paste very thick and let it sit for about 30 minutes. So while that's setting and working, I'm going to clean the stove top. First I'll remove all the elements and the drip pans. Then I'll lift up the top of the stove so I can clean underneath. I'm just using my vinegar and water spray and a toothbrush. and a glass top scrub. I'm using a toothbrush to get into the vents in the front of the oven. They tend to collect grease and lint, and they're hard to get to, so a toothbrush works perfectly. I use the vinegar and water spray on the top of the stove, and if there is grease that is stubborn, I'll use just a drop of dish soap. Again, I like to use the toothbrush in areas that are hard to get to, like underneath the knobs and around the clock surface area. And for an extra shine, I'll just wipe it off with a cotton flour sack towel. 
to remove any water spots. These are just inexpensive drip pans that I bought to put in the stove after we moved into this apartment because the ones that were left were quite dirty. And I like to create my own dirt and not live with somebody else's. So that was why I bought these. Again, they're inexpensive and so they discolor really quickly. I think I'd like to replace them at some point with something a little heavier duty. A trick that I learned to clean the elements is to just use a balled up piece of tin foil and just rub it along the element until the original metal shine comes through. The elements will turn black after a lot of use and this just brings back the original shine. Now you can see that that front element is the one that we use the most and so food tends to spill over and it has just discolored the drip pan. I think I'd like to get black ones to put in there just to avoid that discoloration in the future. Okay, so it's been about half an hour so I'm going to start wiping off the baking soda and water paste. And that food is just wiping right off with very little actual scrubbing. You can see I'm just using a regular dishcloth to wipe it off right now. And then for some extra cleaning power, I'll just spray my water and vinegar spray on top of the baking soda paste and use my glass safe scrub to get off any little bits that are still stuck on. The part of cleaning the oven that probably takes the longest is just getting the baking soda out of the oven. You want to make sure to wipe things down thoroughly. You'll notice after things start to dry whether or not you've got all of the baking soda out because it turns white when it dries. I love to see that door shine again. And after I'm done wiping it out, I will use just a flour sack towel to dry it off to avoid the water spots. And for the racks, I just use soapy water and steel wool. Again, we rent this apartment, so who knows how abused this oven has been. And the racks will never look like new again, but at least I know they're clean. And for 
just a quick touch up in the front. I'm just using, again, the vinegar and water spray and a microfiber cloth to wipe it down. We're trying out a new veggie burger option. Mmm, it was really good. And so the oven's done. Stove top is clean, the inside is shining. All done with non-toxic cleaner that you can just make at home with things you already have in your house. I've never actually seen an oven cleaner do any better than this. This fridge really needs a good thorough clean. It's been a while since I've actually emptied it out and cleaned and I know that there is food in the bottom and things stuck on the shelf. And so it is just past time to do this. I personally take issue with these big refrigerators that are so deep that you can lose food items in the back. I don't like it when leftovers and things get pushed to the back and then you don't see them and they end up rotting and going to waste. I really take more of a minimalist approach to food. I like to be able to see at a glance everything that I have. And so when we have too much, it causes us to waste food because we don't see it. Out of sight, out of mind. I would rather have less food in the house and know that we're actually going to eat it than to have an abundance and have it go to waste. You can see the food that's just stuck on the shelves and underneath where the drawers were. And I don't know if this happens to you, but I always find hair and lint in the bottom of my refrigerator. Maybe it's just our household, but every time. So the first thing I do is just wipe out the big crumbs and leftover things that are on the shelf before I actually start cleaning. And where there's food or something stuck on, I'll just lay a wet cloth on top of it and let it set so to loosen up the stickiness. And then I'm gonna go through everything that I took out to make sure everything's fresh, get rid of things that are not fresh that we don't use. I had a couple of kombucha scobies that have just been sitting in there. I thought I was going to find somebody to give them to, but that didn't work out. And to be honest, my kombucha is going crazy on my countertop right now. So I know I have plenty of scoby to go around if anybody wants some. So this is a perfect example of something that was shoved to the back. I made some applesauce and it sat in the refrigerator for probably over a month and it had pink mold on it.
and I found a half used carton of vegetable broth that was past date. I found half a jar of spaghetti sauce that nobody really cared for so it wasn't getting consumed. Some black beans that had not been used in time. I'm just loading all those dishes that I emptied into the dishwasher. I'm rinsing out the bins with just some warm soapy water using my Mrs. Meyers dish soap. And then I wipe them clean with a flour sack towel to remove any water spots. Now this bit where a carton had stuck onto the glass is now all loosened and wipes right off. And this is just my water and vinegar spray, knowing that it is safe and non-toxic and I don't have to worry about it coming in contact with food items in the refrigerator. I could not figure out how to get this drawer out of the refrigerator, so I just have to wash it while it's in here. Again, just using the water and vinegar spray. Now I'll put the food back that I'm keeping as well as the drawers and the vegetable and fruit items that go in them. Then I'll clean out the door which is full of condiments and pickles and various other things, which often drip and make a mess in these little drawers. See what I'm talking about? I found the biggest hair in the bottom shelf. So we had some leftover pickles from months ago that I emptied out, some old mayonnaise. We had two bottles of sriracha and so I got rid of the older one. And then just putting them all back in the door in groupings that make sense. Condiments, dressings, jellies, pickles. And there it is, all clean from top to bottom. 
and I can see everything that's in there, which makes me very happy. I do need to do some grocery shopping, and so maybe I'll show you a grocery haul in a video coming up. Let me know if, in the comments if that would be something you'd like to see. A minimalist, mostly plant-based grocery haul. Well, I hope you found some inspiration in this Clean With Me video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, a clean space and a clean heart will bring peace of mind. Thanks for coming along. I hope if you like this video, you'll give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss the next video coming out. <laughs> what happened, Ella? <laughs> Tell the viewers. <laughs> coffee hazards. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.